Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking all about catching panfish on tiny little micro tungsten jigs. And we got Brad Hawthorne, he's gonna share a bunch of tips that'll help you catch more panfish this winter. So without further ado, let's jump right in. For years and years, almost since the beginning of tungsten, we've had one to four different head shapes and everyone has them. Absolutely, everyone has their own rendition of color and crazy colors and moderate colors in the same head shape design. Well, what is coming out now is guys are actually making their own molds and Northland has done that, especially with the mud bug and the gill getter, where you have really good detail in the heads and that's largely due to the manufacturing process of tungsten is a lot of times there are two pieces that are glued together and a lot of people don't know that they're not molded right to the head of the jig they're like glued two pieces glued together and then painted over so you don't see that but what northland has done is really got the protruding eyes the mouth the nose and above all what i really like is on the mud bug and the gill getter, it doesn't take much, but little bits of flat spots on the top of the lure. And what that does is gives you a really, really clean sonar signal. It doesn't have to be too big, but you notice that just that flat spot on the front and the back, and you see how they're sloped on both sides. So when you're jigging, you get that sharp return back to your, back to your flasher. So you know exactly where your jig is at, even in weeds. That's one of those little things that when you're looking at tungsten jigs on the market, always look for a jig that's got a little bit of a flat spot in it so that you get a good return. Now the other part is with all that detail in the head, what you've seen is panfish, you've been using your aqua view, you come up, and they just stare and stare and stare. And a lot of times you're like, why aren't they biting? Why aren't they biting? They're getting a good look at that. They're like, hey, is this what we've been eating? Does this look buggy? Is this what we want to be want to be doing right now? So if you take a look at that, there is so much detail in that little bug right there. It is absolutely crazy. So when do I fish tungsten? I fish tungsten when I need a jig that moves super fast. When I need a jig that can really pound on the bottom or get through slush in the hole when I'm fishing shallow water is when I use tungsten. Tungsten has about 30 to 40% faster action than lead. Sometimes you want that slower action of the lead to get a slower fall and an easier movement of the softer movement of the jig. But for tungsten, what I find, especially for bluegill and crappie, is that fast pounding action when you're using plastics is absolutely dynamite. And that's why we've seen the market in tungsten or in, in ice fishing, pan fishing jigs for the last five to seven years go almost exclusively to tungsten because there's very few negatives with it, especially now that we're getting that ultra intricate fine detail in the head shapes of these lures. Now obviously when you're using these tungsten jigs, the profile and the size of the hook are two important factors, but what's also extremely important is what you're putting on that hook, whether it be meat or it's plastic. So next up, Brad is gonna talk a little bit about how he dials in his presentation, both for what he's tipping the hooks with and also the type of knots that he likes to use because that can make a really big difference too. All right, so in and outs of how I rig my panfish. I usually start out with plastics. I always start with plastic just because you don't have to rebate. And that's just my go-to. It's been that for years. We've proven plastics to be, you know, they almost put live bait in the, you always have to have it, don't get me wrong. I don't go panfish fishing without live bait, with, whether that be Euro larvae or wax worms or meal worms. But I always start out with plastics because about 80% of the time we can get fish to go on plastics just as easily as live bait. When I do switch to live bait is when I get that constant picking at the back of the lure or the jig where they won't take it into their mouth. Where they'll, they'll bite it, maybe swim away. You guys have all had that, it's super frustrating. That's when I fish, switch to that meat so they get that taste, they get that pop of that that worm in their mouth and then they take it the next step further and you set the hook. So I always have that live bait with me, but I always start with plastics. Now we go into rigging, you can see I have a loop knot there. I always start with a loop knot and it's a personal preference. A lot of guys will say, well, I start with a polymer. The only two knots I use for panfish jigs are the polymer 
and the loop knot. And that's all through experimentation. You'll see sometimes with the loop knot, you're getting a bit more. Sometimes you get better hook sets, in my opinion, with a loop knot because that lure simply goes at a 90 quicker with that instead of fighting the tightness of the knot to get there. So keep that in mind too, if you get some light biting uh, panfish, that is almost on a hinge to be able to do this a lot more freely when you're setting the hook. The other part about the new series here in tungsten of the mud bug is it's just got the right hook size on it. You can see that hook is not too big and it's not too small. And to, to sink that point a little bit more in the 128th size, you can see that that hook, again, is the perfect size. So in my opinion, what Northland has done is mar married a lot of the key points all of us panfish freaks have been wanting for years, which was either a lot of these tungsten jigs had way too big of hooks on them or they had way too small of hooks on them to where you're fighting to get a decent sized plastic on there or you're fighting to load them up with meat. So Northland's come up with the perfect hook size for both sizes of the lures. So when you're at your retailer looking at them, feel confident that you can either load them up with larvae or put plastic on them and they'll do perfect. Now Brad talked a little bit already about the new tungsten profiles for both the mud bug and the gill getter, but now he's gonna talk a little bit about when he likes to use each of those options. So when to use either the tungsten mud bug or the tungsten gill getter. Okay, so the gill getter I use in deep water and there's one reason for that. It's got a little bit bigger profile, and again, those flat spots I talked before earlier, this guy, this jig has a nice, I mean, it's got the largest profile on the top, on the front and the back of the lure. This guy shows up like a spoon in deep water. That is the main reason I use this, this jig in deep waters is just the sonar return. I'm able to di dive that, that, that gain curve down and get the same return so I'm not blowing everything out. So I can still tell the difference between bugs in the water and fish, especially when they're mixed together, that is when I use this jig because it shows up really, really well on a low gain setting on any type of electronics. So if you're using a Helix like me, I'm usually using this in 25 to 35 feet of water on anywhere from six to nine on my gain scale. So that's why I use this. This lure right here is quite simply the flash of the lure, how heavy it fishes, and the sonar return. With the mud bug profile, I typically use this in just say 16 feet or under, because it's got a little bit smaller profile. It's still got the flat spots, which are smaller, on the top of the lure that this guy here fishes a little bit smaller. I still get that same great sonar return in that shallower water, and it's still got the nice bugginess of the head. So I use this guy in shallow weeds. I use this guy up to about 16 to 20 feet of water, and it's still got all the benefits of the mud bug in a little bit smaller profile. Now when you're using these tiny little tungsten jigs, the rod and the line that you use can be extremely critical, not just for setting the hook and fighting the fish, but more importantly, for detecting those really soft bites that you're gonna get from bluegills and sometimes from crappies as well. Personally, I like to use a spring bobber rod paired up with two pound fluorocarbon. And actually Brad has a similar setup. He likes to use a traditional rod, but he's gonna run through that right now. So my setup for any type of tungsten is I'm using, this is a tuned up power noodle. One of my favorite, it's just one of my favorite rods. It's a fiberglass rod. It's got a nice sensitive tip on there. It loads nice. I can still see up bites with it. It's just an awesome rod. It's been one of my favorite rods for years. Now with that being said, when I'm using heavier eighth ounce stuff, I'll go to the bull whip. Line choice. Now this is where guys are all over the map. My line choice for crappie and bluegill is two pound fluorocarbon, period. There's not a time where I go to mono. There are times when I'm sight fishing that I do go to some colored lines and I watch the coil of the line when I'm jigging and wait for that to stop and then I'll set the hook. But that's in super shallow situations. So my line choice again is two pound, whether I'm fishing shallow or deep. I know some of those tournament guys go to that one pound stuff. I just have a problem with that as a guide giving clients one pound test line. Sometimes those hook sets are a little bit more aggressive and we end up popping the line. But two pound test line for me, day in and day out. If I'm on bigger panfish, bigger perch, bigger crappie, if I'm 
trophy bluegill hunting, two pound line does work, but then I'll bump up to that three pound line. So that's kind of my setup. And again, that is in 100% floral carbon. I found that floral carbon, it's invisible. It, it sinks, which aids in the action of getting the lure down. It slows down the action of the tungsten sometimes when you really need that, that lure to be a little bit less aggressive. So it's basically a simple setup. And my only two line, or my only two knots I use again are polymer knot and the loop knot like I have here. Next up, Brad is gonna talk a little bit about some of the biggest mistakes that he sees anglers make when they're using tiny little jigs for panfish. So mistakes I see, anglers making with tungsten is using too big of lures too shallow you like typically when you go shallower unless like perch is like perch is a separate conversation bluegill crappie when you're fishing shallow you don't need a large lure you know the shallower water is usually clear fish can see it more is guys go to eighths and larger spoons when they should be going to those smaller sizes when it's only six to twelve feet of water and they're just they're being too big with their lure choices. They're being more of a, a perch predator type of size of lure versus a panfish size of lure. The other one is using too thick of line. I can't tell you how many of my customers where they show up with four to six pound line when we're going crappie or bluegill fishing and they, they could have a $150 rod. It doesn't matter because they're not gonna see the bites because in 20 feet of water, you have so many line coils that it takes three or four inches for that fish when it bites to get that line coil out before it activates the tip of the rod. So that's where I always say that that two pound line at the most three is always gonna detect the most bites. Now last up, Brad is gonna talk a little bit about a few of his go-to favorite colors. So colors with panfish jigs, whether that be tungsten or lead, um, the simplest way to put it, I would like to tell you that there's a silver bullet on a panfish color and there's not. That's why when we're out pan fishing, we will change six, eight different times to figure out what's the fastest way to extract the fish out of the hole. Sometimes that's gold with a brown plastic. Sometimes that's UV pink with a white plastic. Sometimes that's UV pink loaded with larva. You just don't know because panfish, as you guys know, their attitudes and fish feeding are all over the board. You could catch 30 fish in the morning just to have it taper off to noon to two fish and then pick back up in the evening. But what I've always found, no matter what the conditions are, there's always that right color, whether that be golden brown, silver, whatever it is, if you keep playing with color, and size, you're gonna get those fish to go. So again, I would love to tell you that there's a silver bullet color. I can give you my top three, which is UV pink, gold, and then some type of a glow brown, glow black, kind of your natural mineral color. Those are gonna be my top three. So don't put a staple on that. You know, obviously find whatever lakes in your area are their kind of favorite go-to colors, but that's why everyone usually has three to 400 jigs in a box this big for panfish, because there's no true, this is the best color for panfish. Well, that's about all we got for you this week. Special thanks to Brad for sharing all the information. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below because we have a lot more awesome content coming this winter that you're not going to want to miss. So until then, we'll see you in the next one.